Okay, welcome back. This is aggregate supply rate demand number two. And now we're going to work with the aggregate supply line. Now the aggregate supply line is where your different professors will teach this different ways. I'm going to try to teach it a way that's applicable to everybody. Um, the aggregate supply line is all about producers and it shows the relationship between the price level, that's this y-axis over here, and the amount of real domestic output, that's this level down here, real GDP, that firms in the economy produce. So as the price level changes, the concept is that companies will produce more or less output depending on the price level. Now remember, think of this as inflation. That's price level around everything. So everything, every price is going up and down, etc. Now it does get complicated here. There are different theories about the aggregate supply line. And there are different ways to draw it. In general, safe way of drawing it is upward sloping like that. Okay, so we're going to draw that right now and talk about this particular way of drawing the aggregate supply line. Let's put A, S here. The question is, why does it slope up like this? And, you know, there's no easy way around it, I'm afraid, but the concept is that as price levels go up, some things change and some things don't. So, for example, as the price level goes up, I can sell my product for more money. Okay? So, if you can sell your product for more money, then you're making more profits and you're liable to produce more. Simple enough. But you know, this is general price level. So what's happening with wages? That becomes, you know, does this mean all wages are going up too? Because then that doesn't make sense. You can sell your product for more money, but guess what? You have to pay more in wages. So why would you sell more? Your profits aren't changing. So what's implied here is that wages and other forms of cost don't go up as fast. So the price level goes up, but wages which account for about 75% often of product costs, wages are stickyish, meaning they don't go up so much. So the price level's going up, I'm selling my product for more money, but the wages I pay my workers aren't going up as much. So you get this kind of effect. As price levels go up, I'm willing to produce increasing amounts of output as I go along there. So that's a slopey uppy aggregate supply line. But you know, there are different places people talk about in the aggregate supply line. Let's talk about a place down here. Down here, we're going to draw it kind of flat like that and then connect with this slopey part. Down here is a special moment. This is a kind of super short run uh, supply line. What's happening there? What's going to happen there is wages don't move at all. It's kind of a contractual agreement period where you sign up for a company and say, I will earn this amount in the next year and no matter what happens. So this is kind of representing a place where costs are stable or don't change at all. It also represents a place where there's high unemployment. Look, here's full employment way out here. Back down here, there's lots of unemployment. Let's put lots of unemployment, right? And so as prices would go up or down, you just go outside your office and grab somebody who's unemployed. You don't have to pay them more. It's very cheap to hire workers over here. So if, if prices go up a little bit, you're going to make a lot of profit. You're going to produce a lot, and your wages are going to stay the same. So you get a kind of flattish part down here. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at one more part that we can talk about. And that's over here as we approach full employment. Let's draw a part here. Whoop! We're going to go straight up. And the reason why we go straight up here is because this is a place where we're getting our limitations here. Look, let's put a dash, dash line down to this. We're limited to how much we can produce. We can only produce so much as determined by the number of people in society. And what's happening here? When you go outside your door to hire somebody, there aren't anybody out there. There's no unemployment. And people are demanding higher wages. As a matter of fact, some people call this kind of the long run. 
this straight up and down part, the long run supply line. Some of your textbook will draw a straight line all the way down, so it'd be just like a straight line like that and call it the long run aggregate supply line. Because that means wages are already flexible. They're very flexible. So that what's going to happen is um, if you get an increase in your product price, you have an equivalent increase in wages and resource costs. So your profits don't go up at all. So as price levels go up, you don't really produce any more. And that there's this natural full employment output level that's going to happen. And as price levels change, what's going to happen? Output's not going to change much at all. So in the long run, prices are completely for flexible. And uh, you get this kind of shape, straight up and down, curvy, and then flat. Now, different textbooks do this differently. Some textbooks just work with this part. Some textbooks will put the long run straight up and down and put an X here, meaning a demand and an average supply in the short run. When we go forward, we're going to kind of draw this pink part and use that, because all textbooks use that part. And we'll talk about the long run as well. But for now, <clears throat> this is the way it's shaped and the reason why it's shaped. It's not easy, is it? Now this shift, this line can shift to the right and to the left as well. And let's just quickly talk about that. And when we talk about this shifting line, the aggregate supply line, there's particular reasons why it's shifting to the left and to the right. And it kind of shifts in a funny way. But first of all, if wages change, if there's a significant increase in input prices, things become less profitable and it shifts to the left. So we'll put wages here or domestic resource prices. So if domestic resource prices increase, it shifts to the left. If domestic resource prices decrease, it shifts to the right. There's productivity. So if we become more productive, more productive, it shifts to the right. Less productive, it shifts to the left. And you can have an increase in business taxes, which makes things less profitable, less profitable, and it shifts to the left. Or you can have increased government regulations, and it would shift to the left. If you have an in decrease in government taxes, it shifts to the right. Things become more profitable. If you have a decrease in government regulations, it shifts to the right as things become easier to produce. Change in productivity, change in input prices, change in the legal institutional environment, shift this thing right and left. Just like the aggregate demand, there are two ways to look at this. Why is it shaped this way? That's one, the shape. And why it shifts left to right, and that's a whole nother part of it. We're going to end our aggregate supply discussion here. Next time, we're going to put them together, and we're going to shift the aggregate demand line and shift the aggregate supply line, and we'll talk more about shifting and equilibrium there. That might take a couple more. I'm not sure. But for now, it's this weird discussion about the aggregate supply line and why it's sh shaped this way. This is where different professors will talk in different ways. So it's kind of tricky. Sometimes I use it this way. Sometimes I use the long run straight up in a, in a short run aggregate supply. Really what that is is a straight yellow line and a pink line that crosses it. Um, we'll talk more about those kinds of things later maybe, but um, it's time to move on. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.